Thank you for joining us today and learning more about the Data Cookbook by iData, the leading data governance solution for institutions of higher education. This is part of a series of videos providing details on the benefits and features of the Data Cookbook. We hope you find them helpful. Now we'll look at some of the setup of these quality rules and reference data. Reference data, meaning your list of valid codes, like programs or majors, can be entered and with our data management connectors can be synchronized with your source data systems. This process can alert appropriate users when changes occur that may impact business processes or reports. I can create a reference data here. Now I'm going to fill in a name and a description. And then I can start adding the list and its values. Now for the values, I can enter them manually for small list where I can be putting in one code at a time, or I can be pasting them in from another application. I have here a spreadsheet of codes that I can copy from. So I have my department list here. I can copy and come back into the cookbook and then paste. And that will bring in all of the values that I've copied. If my values in this list can be grouped or otherwise organized, you can specify a rollup by clicking here. A rollup can be another reference data list, or it can just have, an, I'm choosing schools here, or it can just have a manually created name. Once I've chosen the rollup, I can now assign values in my list that correspond to the values in that schools list. We can add additional lists when these codes exist in other data systems. So I can add another list and choose a data system that this might come from. When I'm adding values here, we can indicate which code it maps to in the master list that I, that I had just created. If we have the data management connectors, we can provide technical details about where this list is stored. This can enable the integration to automatically update this list on a schedule. I can use our data system browser to find the table and columns needed to update this list. And here I'll drag the department code I found in the data system browser over into the code field in the data cookbook. Now this list can be used in rules and will be updated the next time the data management connector synchronizes. Back on a definition now, I can choose to add another quality attribute. I'll scroll down past these other attributes and click on add a quality attribute. You get, there are several different validation types to choose from all providing uh, some basic validations, as well as the ability to write a complex validation where you provide the query logic. I'm going to select a valid value list, and then I'm going to get to choose one of my existing reference data from my uh, set. You can also identify the severity of this rule. The rule severity can be used to identify different workflow for different situations. So if this is a very severe problem, if this rule fails, then we can have it uh, execute a different workflow. We can drill into one of these other existing rules to see more technical details. I'm going to drill into the length rule now to take a look at it. On, when you're looking at an individual rule, you can start to see the technical information, which includes what elements that it's going to be using in your, in your data system. This is also where you will find any assessments that have occurred on this rule, where it has tested that against your database. And this is where you can log manual assessments. If you have our data management connectors, this rule can be automatically tested and assessments created for you based on your actual data. But here we will go ahead and manually enter an assessment after having manually executed our own query test. I'm going to put in a sample that uh, we found 10 failures out of some number of rows. 
When an assessment is created that exceeds the threshold, the cookbook will offer the, to create an issue for this so that it can be researched. So with each rule, you get to assess what the threshold is that would cause the cookbook to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and report this as a quality issue. Now I've, report, I've recorded my new assessment, and now you'll notice that the data quality rule here now has a red indicator on it. And we, when we hover over the assessment, we see now that the, it's low and that we have received uh, the certain number of failures on, on this date. This will also appear at the definition level when a user is going to see this definition now. We've now shown you a little about working with quality attributes on a definition. You can also create quality rules that stand alone, separate from a definition. I'll go look at the list of those now. These quality rules can be used when there is no specific definition that they are part of, or when you simply want to document a quality rule outside of a definition. They have the same app, they have the same capabilities of assessments and reporting quality issues that we have just seen for those that are attached to definitions. You can, however, uh, provide them with a different workflow for review and approval so that they can go down a different path for approval if they need to. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the quality issue resolution process. And I'm going to go to the quality issues queue here. We've already seen a couple of examples of quality issues being created, but here I want to show you an issue in progress. I'm going to click on this one down here, the threshold exceeded for current name. These issues allow you to track the cause and the resolution and data, data cleanup efforts for each issue. You also have the capability of uploading research data that's useful in the research and resolution of this issue. This research data that's uploaded has a separate permission set up, allowing a very fine control on who can upload and who can see this data. Here is some research data that was added that I have the permission to see, and you can see that it can provide some of the data that is needed for the research of that. As we mentioned, this issue, this issue resolution follows a workflow that you can design, just like all other objects in the data cookbook. And here we see our default example workflow giving you the stages for research and correction and cleaning and then finally closing the, the quality issue. Well, this completes our tour of the data quality features. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for joining us today and hearing about the data cookbook. Please watch our other videos located at datacookbook.com slash videos. You can also learn about the data cookbook at datacookbook.com slash tour. And remember, there is a community focused on data management at community.datacookbook.com, where you can access information regarding data governance, reporting, and data definitions. Have a great day.